Every year, 6% of Bahamian children are born with a heart defect. We at Cable 12. And the Nassau Guardian decided, decided to lend a helping hand in creating more awareness, awareness to the cause of saving little hearts. One surgery can cost up to $250,000. We at Cable 12 and the Nassau Guardian hear their cry. We are asking you to make a donation to these efforts. Embrace the opportunity. And save a little heart. It's Wednesday, February 27, 2013, and this is NB12. Coming up tonight in news, BTC's CEO weighs in on the Prime Minister's claim that the sale of BTC was a very bad deal. Defence Force officials beef up manpower after a recent spike in Haitian migrants. A Canadian arrest warrant issued for the head of the country's stem cell task force. An advocate of same-sex marriage in the country is calling for a new definition of marriage. And nurses say they want the pay increases government has promised them before the end of the month. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. I'm Christina McNeil and your MB12 starts right now. Joining us, it's unclear how cable and wireless executives feel about government's apparent inability to purchase additional shares in the Bahamas telecommunications company. However, the man responsible for BTC's day-to-day -day operation says he's not losing sleep over it. BTC's CEO Jeff Houston also told reporters today that CWC has significantly improved the telecom, despite Christie's claim that the sale of BTC was a very bad deal. Vonique Toot reports. Prime Minister Perry Christie set tongues wagging yesterday when he admitted that government cannot afford to buy back 2% of BTC shares. Well, what does the company's CEO think? Jeff Houston wouldn't comment on that, but as for the Prime Minister's claim that the BTC sale was a very bad deal, Houston says BTC is better off now than it was two years ago. We feel that we have made a significant improvement in BTC in terms of our technology. Albeit we had a few issues with our service as we trans transitioned people to a new, a new network, but we've put BTC in a much better place to, to take advantage of a whole new world of opportunity. And we've, we feel that we are bringing a whole new world of opportunity to all customer groups in the Bahamas and really opening our doors and allowing all of the Bahamas to take advantage of BTC. So I would contend that actually I feel BT is a much better place now today. Than what, where we found it two years ago. Houston revealed last year that government is receiving almost double the revenue from BTC as a 49% owner than it did when it owned the entire company. Nevertheless, Prime Minister Christie stressed on Tuesday government will not abandon its plan to regain a majority share position, even though it doesn't have the necessary funds. When asked about those comments, Houston stated quite emphatically that he's not going to lose sleep over government's attempts to become BTC's majority owner or its inability to pay for the two additional shares it needs. I think I've got a lot more to worry about in the day-to-day -day operation of BTC and the continuing transformation of that business than to be worrying about a shareholder discussion. And to be quite honest, that doesn't keep me awake at night. What keeps me awake at night is getting this technology right, getting the service right, helping my people and transforming the business. And that is really, those are my priorities really. Besides, Houston says he can't speak on behalf of cable and wireless executives, just BTC's management team which handles day-to-day -day operations. That's something you have to ask the guys who are providing the money. I spend it, manage it. <laughs> <laughs> He was also unfazed by Christie's plan to appoint former BTC boss Leon Williams as the third director for the government on the company's board. Williams took legal action against BTC after he was terminated in 2008 and was strongly opposed to the sale of BTC to CWC. However, Houston says they're willing to work with whomever government appoints. It's not up for us to determine who sits on the board, it's up for the shareholders who determine who sits on the board. And we as management have got to work with whoever they provide. And that's, I mean, that's the bottom line. It's not, 
I'm not going to pass any judgment. Regardless of what happens, BTC CEO says his overriding objective is to build a world-class telecommunications company. While speaking at the Advanced Toastmasters Club's monthly meeting today, he revealed that CWC has pumped more than $100 million into BTC since its controversial sale in 2011 and plans to invest another $50 million in the next financial year. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vonnie Tude. And in the first two months of 2013, Royal Bahamas Defense Force officials have apprehended nearly 600 Haitian migrants in Bahamian waters. Defense Force Commander Commodore Roderick Bowe says that figure is nearly half of all repatriations last year. According to Bo, 1,357 Haitian migrants were repatriated in 2012, but so far in 2013, he says the Defense Force has seen what appears to be a spike in Haitian migrants making their way to Bahamian waters. More than 90 Haitian migrants were apprehended on Crooked Island Tuesday afternoon. They were added to the 88 arrested on Sunday and Monday near Exuma and Cat Island. And earlier this month, 187 Haitian migrants were arrested off the coast of Inagua. And so when we look at the almost 600 this year, um, it seems like there is a spike in the number within the first two months of, of, of this year. And so that is um, some reason for concern. Though this number does not include those that were apprehended at sea and uh, were given over to the U.S. Coast Guard to repatriate directly to Cuba, oh, sorry, to Haiti. Bo says the high number of migrants being apprehended is not typical of this time of year, but it may have something to do with the current weather conditions. Despite uh, the efforts by our international partners and the agencies here within the Bahamas, there seems to be an increase over last year around the same time of the numbers that are been coming towards the Bahamas. We are not certain as to why uh, there has been that increase, but we believe it's because of the um, conditions are favorable for them to sail. According to Acting Director of Immigration William Pratt, there are 324 detainees at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. About 90 percent of them are Haitian migrants. Pratt says 114 of those Haitian migrants will be repatriated tomorrow via a Bahamas Air charter flight. Another repatriation flight is scheduled for Monday. Meanwhile, Bo says the Defense Force has taken note of the recent spike in Haitian migrants entering waters in the southern Bahamas and has moved to beef up manpower and resources in that area. In addition to having a, a vessel stationed at Adinagua, we've also stationed an aircraft there to uh, provide um, aerial surveillance um, to work in collaboration with that vessel. And as a result, we were able to, there were two apprehensions, off Ina, one off Inagua and one on the southern coastline of Inagua. However, Bo has admitted that the Defense Force is faced with the ongoing challenge of patrolling a vast area with limited manpower and resources. In other news, police in Montreal have issued an arrest warrant for Arthur Porter, managing director of the Bahamas Cancer Center and head of the Stem Cell Task Force. Porter resigned as CEO of McGill University's Health Center in 2011. According to an arrest warrant issued by the Quebec Anti-Corruption Unit, he's wanted on six criminal counts. The unit's press liaison officer, Anne Frederick Lawrence, spoke with Guardian News today. She confirmed Porter is wanted on charges including fraud, conspiracy to commit fraud, fraud against the government, and embezzlement. Other people wanted along with Porter include Yanni Elbaz, Jeremy Morris, Riyad Ben Icy, and Pierre Duhame. Lawrence confirmed the charges are related to the McGill University Health Center. She said they've been investigating this case since spring 2012. When our news team called the cancer center, we were told Porter wasn't there, but Guardian sources say Porter underwent surgery today and is home resting. We understand he is aware of the warrant of arrest. Following recent calls by church leaders to lawfully define marriage as the union between a man and a woman, gay rights activist Aaron Green told the Constitution Commission today there are two definitions of marriage. Celeste Nixon has more in this report. In a country founded on Christian principles, local human rights activist Aaron Green, addressing the Constitutional Commission, described the church as a special interest group which should not interfere with the state's obligations to its citizens, including when it comes to the institution of marriage. Green explained the state's obligations to its citizens is different from the church's obligations to its parishioners. The church in this jurisdiction is a non-governmental institution. It is a special interest group. And so while members of the religious community 
within their rights, are expressing an, a desire for this, for the state institution to be defined according to their laws, the state has an obligation to communicate to the church that these two institutions are separate and distinct, and that the state has a different obligation to its citizens than the church has to its parishioners. So if the state is offering special benefits to married people, then it should not prevent me from getting married because I have a right to share in that benefit if I want to. Green said regardless of sexual orientation, all citizens should have the right to enjoy the benefits of marriage. For the church to think that they can define the entire institution of marriage according to their rules is dangerous. And I think, I think legally it is wrong. I think that this, the state has an obligation to its citizens that do not adhere to the laws and rules of the Christian church. A former spokesperson for the now disbanded Rainbow Alliance, Green said, members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered community frequently suffer discrimination because people are unable to differentiate between professional standards and personal beliefs. Green said the commission has come about as a government decision in response to the growing pressure from the international community. However, she said, its work should be reflective of the will of the people regarding the various recommendations it makes. When the government said, we are going to have a referendum, I do not think that that was prompted or forced uh, to happen by the activities of Bahamians on the ground. Although we have had in the past a strong LGBT lobby, and in certain sectors of the society, we have a strong uh, women's rights lobby that are looking at issues of uh, citizenship in particular, that those movements are not what manifested this committee, that, that, that this committee was manifested by the government in response to external pressures requiring us to, to comply, requiring us to get our laws in line with the rest of the international community. Green also told the commission Explicit provisions are needed in the Constitution, preventing discrimination based on sexual orientation. She noted this would create an environment where Bahamians would be more likely to modify their behavior towards the gay and lesbian community. Reporting for NB12, I'm Celeste Nixon.